Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to the Citizen Channel. Yeah, another new feature this one. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a look back in time of uh, different, you know, we'll go back, go back. Uh, we can all go back to 66, 67 because that's when this all started. But obviously we can go up to modern times as well. And we're going to have a look at um, the City Supporters Club's Player of the Year Awards. Yeah, which I said that was the inaugural season. Uh, it was 1966-67, uh, and so well, the winner of that, of course, was uh, a certain gentleman called Tony Buck, who you probably know very, very well. So we're going to have a look at uh, the context of the season uh, for Tony Buck and, of course, uh, for Manchester City themselves. We're not going to go into any great lambs of what happened after this season, which we all know uh, went better and better, didn't it, for Mr Buck? But uh, we're just going to have a look at that season. We're going to have a look at uh, the Player of the Year awards for 1966-67, Mr Tony Buck, please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification all when these blogs are coming out. I try and inform and entertain City past, City history, and obviously we do the City present when the, when the league game's on. There's lots more City present, obviously, when the league starts again. But obviously, uh, lots of history stuff still when the league's on, but also a lot more during the mid-season or the close, the, the between seasons, of course. So check that out. There's also some stuff on film and TV. If you're very interested in that, please have a look at that as well. I do reviews and information vlogs. So if you want to have a rest from football, I mean, I, I'd like to have a rest from football. I think you're old potty, wouldn't you, if you just uh, lived and breathed football? Well, perhaps some people do, but uh, I, I need that break myself. But uh, there you go. So check out that as well if you get a chance or if you're very interested in that. Please, there's links on screen for Facebook and Twitter. And I do uh, try and check every few days and follow everyone back on there. So much appreciated. Lots of City stuff, of course, posted and retweeted from other people, etc. That I find interesting or old and new. So uh, if you can check that out. Thumbs up. Any, any thumbs up are fantastic. I do get quite a lot for this. I'm trying to get for 20, 20 on these uh, vlogs now. So if you can give me a thumbs up. I get quite near it and in and around it. But uh, it'd be fantastic. You can get me up to 20. 20 little thumbs up. That'd be fantastic. Right, yes, Tony Buck. This is who we're talking about today. Was He was late to professional football. You probably all know this. But it's, it's good to sort of just talk about it and remember... I mean, he was that. He was, in fact, he was that late. He was obviously uh, had to lie about his age to be accepted at his first real full-time professional club, uh, Plymouth Argyle. He was playing part-time, of course, from Bath, and uh, he was a bricklayer, a bricklayer by by uh, profession. Uh, so, but so he's a fit lad. He was a, he was a reasonably fit lad, but uh, yeah, he had to. Uh, Fudge his birth certificate to uh, to make to actually get uh, and apparently he could do it so that he not a year or two off his off his date on the birth certificate so uh, obviously he had to do that for a Plymouth Argyle to sign and they weren't very happy about it obviously his age so it it was overly important but he didn't obviously have to lie to get into into City's team did he but the seemingly high risk signing for Manchester City had a big ally didn't he in, in convincing. Uh, the board, whoever had the money, whoever had the purse strings in those days, to fork out for a, a 31-year-old. Yeah, I mean, he, he was 31. He was literally weeks away when City signed him from his 32nd birthday. So, I mean, you know, most, most players would be thinking about putting the feet, feet up, wouldn't they? And, of course, the ally was Malcolm Allison. And, of course, uh, Tony Buck would spend and City would get an incredible... Eight seasons out of, out of this, uh, well, he's, he's a legend. He still is, isn't he, to this day? Yeah, Alisson had turned uh, to Tony Buck as, as his previous clubs. He'd, he'd, have him, he'd, had, he'd been at Bath when Tony Buck was there and then obviously he dragged him over to Plymouth Argyle, had to lie about his age. And, of course, uh, knowing age was a problem, uh, Alisson, Alisson obviously was obviously approached Joe Mercer and did actually say a similar thing to him, but obviously he's... His sort of skill in convincing Joe Mercer was the fact that uh, Joe Mercer was actually uh, made captain at Arsenal at a similar age. So obviously there's still a few, you know, some years left in the old dog yet, if, if you like, if you sort of uh, pardon the, the saying. Uh, yeah, obviously with City facing a big task, they just, just uh, got promotion back to the first division. Obviously Mercer brought in Alisson to to sort this team out and, and get it to, to safety. I mean, it was, it was a tough division, first division in those days. They say it was the 60s. It was, getting, it was getting tougher and tougher. I mean, they were starting to pay decent wages. Teams were starting to get decent players. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, once Mercer was uh, actually convinced by Malcolm Allison that this, this is the guy they needed to uh, to set him off, um, yeah, we had a little problem getting him from Plymouth then, didn't we? And, obviously, uh, they wanted adequate compensation. 
and Buck wrote about it in his, in his biography. He remembered it in this way. He said that Plymouth turned down the initial bid. In fact, uh, Plymouth demanded what was then a staggering £35,000. I had to go cap in hand to the manager pleading for them to let me go because the opportunity represented everything I'd ever wanted to do. I desperately wanted to test myself by playing at the highest level. And this had to be the final chance of doing so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Again, age. Uh, eventually, they accepted seventeen and a half thousand for so about half of that, and I was on my way to main role. So obviously, that that's Tony Buck. I think he joined City on forty pound a week, a princely sum, a princely sum in those days. Uh, or just just a five pound more. He was on thirty five quid a week at uh, Plymouth Argyle. So just just another fiver. It's not too bad a fiver. I was dead happy with a fifty p when I first started work. A fifty p rise, uh, and the thirty one year old made his debut in the first league game of the season then he signed in July first league game of the season City drew 1-1 at uh, Southampton at the Dell of course on August the 20th uh, 1967 I believe that uh, Preston had all, also shown an interest and he could have actually had a, a chance of going to Preston North End but uh, he decided on City obviously the link with Malcolm was very important and obviously no disrespect to Preston, but uh, in those days they weren't uh, started to work. Their sort of star had started to wane a little bit, as opposed to City's, which was perhaps on 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 the rise just a little bit. Uh, in training, I mean, obviously. Joe Mercer's worried, still worried, obviously, about the age, but he, he not only kept up with his uh, younger teammates, uh, but he sort of shamed them in stamina tests and sprint tests, speed challenges, that sort of thing. So even even Mercer himself was quite impressed with his uh, actual efforts and what he could do. I mean, a 30-odd-year-old guy could uh, run the legs off some of these younger lads. So uh, yeah, even Joe Mercer was impressed by that. Even though Mercer and Allison were convinced he could do the job, I mean, obviously Mercer had a lot of faith in his in his number two, of, of course. Uh, the media of the day weren't overly convinced. They thought it was a bit bit of a risk, uh, to say the least, in the in the rough and tumble of the first division to, for a, an old stage and it was uh, nearly thirty two. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, to actually cope with the rigours of, of the first division. But it didn't uh, take long for Tony Buck that season to show his worth. Uh, within three games of the start of the season, he'd been the star man in two of the games. And the journalists were, were a little bit impressed and beginning to turn. Uh, in his second and third games, a win against Liverpool and Sunderland, he also had the chance to impress the main road faithful. And uh, he certainly did that. It was going to be a tough season, yeah, and the defence would be tested week in, week out. It wasn't going to be easy. And although they never quite got down to the relegation zone, I think we were four from bottom at one stage, uh, as a team, City were always sort of looking over the shoulder. There was a lot of pressure on the, on the defence, etc. I mean, the keepers changed a couple of times. They started off the season with uh, Harry Dowd, then it went to Alan Ogley, and then back to Harry Dowd again there. Pardo sort of, after initially not doing so, sort of established himself as a good number three so obviously there was the great partnership of the future book and pardo of course as the season progressed uh, Stan Horn and and sort of George Heslop featured mainly as centre-backs but it did, did chop and change a little bit but uh, obviously the player week in week out putting in some sterling performances was of course our own Tony Buck he would actually pick up an injury at the Leicester game on the 28th of March 1967, which would uh, keep keep him out the next game, a 1-0 loss at uh, Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. Uh, but that was it. Uh, he came back and finished the season after that. Just one game. So he literally just missed one game. Obviously, he was taken off injured in one, but he literally uh, couldn't be put on the team sheet for just one game. So he missed one game all season. And the only other City player, yeah, the only other City player to better Tony Buck's appearances that season uh, and play in every game as this guy played in every game that season he was a 21 year old yeah a certain uh, guy called Colin Bell he was the only one to actually better Tony Buck's appearances in that 66-67 uh, season I think he gave him a good run for his money in this player of the year awards as well but uh, obviously to, to the old hands saw him off there uh, by the time City played their last game away at uh, Upton Park on the 13th of May 1967, uh, we'd finished comfortably, yeah, in 15 spots. So obviously we'd, uh, we'd done what we wanted to achieve and established ourselves back in the first division without any, any uh, silly things like getting relegated again. 
and it had been a tough season. It was reflected on the uh, in the first ever City Supporters Player of the Season award. I mean, there was only nine teams, don't forget, out of the 22. There's 22 in the first division that had better goals against records, so the defence had done pretty well, although we hadn't scored prolifically. That had been a lot of the problem as well. Uh, but it was the... Uh, based on that, it obviously wasn't going to be a forward who was going to pick up the award, obviously, and it's certainly going to be a defender or a midfielder. Uh, and it was certainly Tony Buck of the, of the back... Five, if you like, including the keepers that had uh, had stood out and was voted, uh, voted for not unanimously, of course, but uh, the largest percentage of the vote went for uh, Mr. Tony Buck by the fans. Uh, yeah, a brilliant season itself for a player that had uh, uh, so much doubt about it, didn't he? Let's be honest about it. At the start, uh, the only person who perhaps didn't doubt him initially was was the guy who, who always stuck by him, uh, Malcolm Allison. He was not not a bad judge, was he in those days? Uh, uh, and he was a good judge. I mean, obviously, he, usually, he sort of went on for younger players after that, didn't he? But he knew, he knew a good old hand when he had one. I mean, in further proof of need of the contribution he made, it was uh, to become he was become officially named as captain, of course, for the uh, forthcoming 67-68 season. And another great servant and previous captain, Johnny Crossan, had played his last game for City at that at Upton Park. That game we just talked about a moment ago. And uh, Buck was the obvious, because of his uh, his playing exploits that season, was the obvious replacement uh, for skipper of the team. And uh, obviously from that next season on, he will be called Skip, which will obviously will become his, his, his name even to this day. Yeah, Tony Buck took pride of place on the first on the front cover. Yeah, the official launch issue of the new Manchester City magazine in nineteen sixty seven sixty eight. So that just showed how it uh, how his uh, stock had grown, if you like. Uh, and there was even an article, a small article in the mag in the magazine about uh, the new captain. And it finished with this uh, little paragraph that sort of summed up uh, what. The fans fought and City fought, I think, really. It's only three lines, very, very small. Everyone at Main Road is happy about the fact that Tony Buck came to Manchester City, for he has made himself a firm favourite with all our supporters. And after all, he's our Player of the Year. There you go, Tony Buck. Thanks for joining me for this little look back at uh, Tony Buck, uh, Manchester City supporters. Play of the year for 1966-67. And yeah, we'll be doing this in order. We'll be delving in, uh, or you know, we'll be going back in back in time. We might or go into the 80s or 90s or 2000s. Who knows? And then back and forward. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, any comments? Any say if it's uh, you could you could uh, if, if we did a thing on Tony, but we'd, we'd be here all night, wouldn't we? We'd be to be like uh, at least a 12 part or something like that, 12 20 minute section. So uh, it's nice to just do a little thing and just look at one season and just uh, and it was a great season for Tony Buck and it was uh, going to get better, wasn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. What are we going to do this today? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or oh, perhaps you have a flit across, have a look at my uh, film and TV channel. I only ask one thing of you. Stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.